fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. the mountains of Mexico to the hills of Wyoming, stories were told of the masked rider of the plains and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto. These stories have come down to us through the generation. Tales of adventure, tributes to the Lone Ranger's courage and daring, the pioneer's own salute to the greatest champion of justice the frontier ever knew. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger... Rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for the panhandle! Oh, Silver! Away! Three men waited in the parlor of the Gilman Ranch House. One sat stiffly in a chair. A second stood erect and motionless. A third nervously paced the length of the room... All three, however, kept their eyes fixed on the door, now closed, that led to old Saul Gilman's bedroom. Finally, the man who was pacing the floor stopped suddenly and... Dusty, why doesn't Doc come out? Why don't he tell us something? Take it easy, Mort. This ain't doing you no good. I'm going crazy. Easy, boy. Easy. Hank. Yes, Mort. If Paul dies, if the Doc can't save him, I'll... Yes? I'll get you. Here now, Mort. Leave your brother alone. Don't you think he feels just as bad about this as you do? Uh, Mort, you'll have to... It's Doc. Doc, is it... Will he... I'm sorry. I did everything I could. You mean... Your father's dead. No. Dead? There went the finest fellow I ever worked for. Dead? You kill him! Don't, Mort. Here, here, stop it. I'll get to you, dirty bastard. Mort, let Hank go. Stay away, don't interfere. Here now, that's enough. Let me at him. Just let me get my hands on him. Get hold of yourself. It was an accident. Hank couldn't help it. You shot him, shot him. No, Mort, no. You did. Mort, wait. Maybe Hank didn't. Nobody can be sure. Nobody's seen your paw get hit. Didn't that fellow found, found him say Paul was laying beside Cheyenne Creek? Yeah, but it wasn't ain't that right. where Hank had been hunting? I don't Hank, think... answer me, wasn't it? Yes, Mort. It was. Had there been anybody else anywhere near the creek? Had there? I don't know. You know, doggone well there hadn't been. All right. There wasn't. Mort, look. You'd been hunting yourself, hadn't you? Over by the salt flats. You trying to say it was one of my bullets hit him? Oh, of course not, Mort. I'm just trying to make the point that uh, if your father had ridden toward the flats instead of the creek, it could have been one of your bullets. I'm not that kind of a fool to shoot when I ain't sure nobody's around. Oh, don't you no, understand? Oh, you can take your hands off of me. I won't hit him. Well, sure. Let him go, Doc. Mort just had a streak there where he forgot himself. He ain't going to fly off the handle again. No. But I got something to say. Hank? Yes? I'm leaving. Oh, wait. Shut now. up and listen to me. From now on, you're no more my brother than, than Dusty here. 
You can have the ranch. You can stay here and run things to please yourself, but we're through. More. Shut up. There's no law to make you pay for what you did. You call it an accident. Dusty and Doc here call it an accident. But I say it's murder even if you didn't know what you was doing. But I tell you I'm that I'm going now. And I won't take a thing with me from this house. I don't want a thing that you've ever touched. But I'll make you a promise, Hank. Mort, don't go like this. Someday you'll pay for this. And I'll be the one to make you. Hank, Mort didn't mean the things he said. He, well, naturally, he's upset. But he'll get over it. He'll be back, and I'm sure he'll apologize. Not him. Oh, but... No, Doc. You don't savvy Mort like I do. But surely he couldn't feel bitter after he's had time to think it over. He'll think it over. And the more he thinks, the more he'll hate me. The tragedy of Saul Gilman's death, at first a shock to the entire district, became a dim memory with the passage of time. Mort, true to his word, not only did not return to the ranch, but completely disappeared. Twenty-five years went by. During those years, Hank had married and had a son, Neil, now 22 years of age. But Neil, in the last several months, had become a problem to his parents. Hank. Yeah, honey? I think I heard Neil ride into the yard a few minutes ago. He's probably putting his horse in the corral. Oh. Won't you speak to him tonight when he comes in? I can't. He won't listen to me. You will have to. I guess I'd better. He's been acting mighty strange lately. I'll let you talk to him alone. he talk more freely if I'm not around. Uh-huh. Time you got to bed anyhow. Good night. Good night. Fool kids. I was the same at his age, though, I reckon. Never got into trouble that I had the sense to tell my folks about it. Still up, Pa? <laughs> Looks like I am, doing it? Sure. Well, I'm about ready to hit the hay. Dog tired. See you in the morning, Pa. Hey, not so fast. Huh? Come back here. What is it? Mind sitting down for a second? Well, no, I guess not. But it's late, and I'll have to be getting up early to get to the bank when it opens. Well, look, son. You ain't been yourself lately, and there's no use your denying it. I can read you like a book. There's something on your mind, something worrying you. Can't let me know what it is. Gosh, Pa, you must be imagining things. That... There's nothing worrying me. Sure, of course I'm sure. Remember, son, there's nothing in the world you can't tell me. That's a point that ain't easy for a father to put over to his son. But it's true. You can tell me anything. Now, come on. Why don't you face up? Oh, I... <laughs> Shucks out with it. Well, there is something, Pa. Well, I don't amount to much. That is, I... <laughs> oh. Hard to get out, huh? Son, there's just two things I hate like sin. Lying and gambling. But take me all around and I'm pretty easy going. So let's have it, huh? Yeah. You think gambling's so awful bad, Pa? For them as can't afford it, there's nothing worse. And I've still to see the first fellow that could afford it. Oh. It leads to debt and trouble and all manner of things that are sinful. I've never gambled myself. And I've never had any use for the man who did. What What made you start talking about that? Oh, thinking of the Black Arrow Cafe, I guess. New fellow running it, ain't there? Uh-huh. How long has you had the place? Oh, uh, about three or four months. What you like? All oh, right, I guess. i never seen him. No? Thought you spent quite a bit of time there. Well, nobody's seen him. Why? Why not? Gosh, I don't know. He's got rooms over the cafe, but he never shows himself. Leaves that to the feller he's hired to sort of manage it for him. Oh, queer kind of cuss, huh? Well, we've been getting away from the subject. You started to say what had been worrying you. Oh, nothing, nothing for honest. Huh? But just now you said no, that you... No, honest there ain't I... I don't know what put the idea in your head. I, well, well, good night. Say, good night, Paul. Now, what in blazes got into him? Did you see him? Uh-huh. What did he say? Honey, maybe I just dreamt it. But 
I'd have sworn he was right on the point of telling me something. He was? Then he shut up just like a clam. Almost a month's journey away, the Lone Ranger and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, had stopped to purchase supplies from an old timer and had remained to pass the time of day with him while their horses rested. So you say you're heading for the panhandle, eh? We expect to reach it sooner or later. Mm, wish I was going along. Yes? Even if I had to wear a mask like you to do it. Yes, sirree, stranger. That used to be my old stamping ground years back. Had a passel of friends there one time. How long has it been since you left? Eh? How long has it been since you left? Uh, just 25 years. You've got an accurate memory. Oh, I don't recollect everything that living it. Just happens when I was leaving, I run into something that made it stick in my mind. Oh? Oh, nothing to interest you, I reckon. Wasn't anything very pleasant either. I thought a heap of that old fella. Yes? Who was that? Oh, likely you never heard of him. Saul Gilman, his name was. Saul Gilman? As mm. a matter of fact, I have. There's a Henry Gilman still in the panhandle. Uh-huh. Old Saul's son. He had two of them. I was just trying to remember what it was I'd heard about Saul. So... Oh, yes, I have it now. There was something about a shooting accident. Henry was supposed to have been hunting. And one of his bullets struck his father by accident. They found Saul later near Cheyenne Creek. Cheyenne Creek? Mm-mm. The Salt Flats. Oh, I'm afraid you're wrong. I remember the whole thing now. It caused a quarrel between Henry and his brother Mort. Mort couldn't forgive his brother for the accident and disappeared. You got that part of it straight, mister. But I still say old Saul was found on the salt flats. Well, that's impossible. If that had been true, Henry couldn't have shot his father. He wasn't near there. That's where they say Mort was hunting. The boys had split up. Don't know anything about that, stranger. But when I say it was the salt flats, I know what I'm talking about. Yes? It was me that found Saul. You were the man who brought him to the ranch house that day? I am. Who was it you told her about when you found him? Why, Hank. What are you getting so excited about? You're sure it was Hank? I ought to be. I knew them boys well. Don't you realize what this means? Huh? Gosh, I... Tyler, we're riding. Uh -uh. Here's Scout. Here's Silver. Hey, what did I say to drive you off so fast? Did I say anything to get you mad? Of course not, old timer. Well, then what's the rush? You give me the most important information I've picked up in the best part of a year. Adios. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Kyle Silver, away! One evening, two weeks later, Neil Gilman was summoned from the Black Arrow Cafe's gaming tables into the office of its manager. Come in, Neil. Yeah. Sent for me, Stag? I did. I think it's about time we had a talk. You've had all the time we can give you. Two weeks ago, you said you'd speak to your father. You didn't. I think we've waited for our money just as long as we can. He got it now. That's too bad. Gosh, I don't savvy you fellas at all. When I first started losing money to you, well, you acted as though you didn't care when you got it back. Now all of a sudden you're saying you have to have it right away. It's not my doing, Neil. It's orders from Mr. Franklin. He said to make me pay up? Yes. Then, then let me talk to him. No one talks to Mr. Franklin. The bank won't like this. You, uh, you may even lose your job. You, you tell him? Why not? I think they'd be interested to know that one of their employees has gambled away $5,000 more than he can pay up. It, it'd mean my job. Yes, I suppose it would. Oh, no, you can't. you got to give me another chance. Another chance? Why? What would we gain by it? You've already admitted you have no hope of getting that money for us. Give me a week. A week? And you have my word. You'll get your cash to the very last penny. You've changed your mind about being able to get the money, huh? I... No way to get it. Oh. That's my business. <laughs> yes, I imagine it is. All right, then, Neil. You have one week. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. Another two weeks passed while Neil's parents found him acting more strangely than ever. At last, his mother could remain patient no longer. She reopened the subject with her husband one evening just as they were finishing supper. And... Hank, stop eating a minute. Huh? Please. All right, I'm ready. Shoot. It's Neil. We've let this go on just as long as we can. I know there's something wrong, something terrible wrong. Mm. Look at him this evening. Won't eat, won't talk to us. Locks himself up in his room as though we were afraid someone were after him. Locked himself in, you say? Yes, I tried his door. Well, there's no use pretending there ain't something eating on the boy. But doggone, it's hard to just force yourself on him. Don't you want to know if he's in trouble? Why, sure I do. Then you can take my word for it, he is. What the trouble is, I don't know. Except that it's serious. Or at least it seems serious to him. Well, I'll have to look into it, I reckon. You go ahead and clear away the dishes. I'll help you wash them later. Oh, do make him talk, Hank. I'll try. Hi in there. Sleeping? What, what do you want? How's for letting your paw in a second? Oh, wait. Well, Pa, what is it? <laughs> Just sitting here in the dark, was you? Shut the door. I don't need no light if you don't, I reckon. Yeah. Feel more like talking now than you did the other time, son? What, what's there to talk about? Well, I don't know. That's what I'm asking you. Well, I uh, have a fight with your girl. Oh, shucks, no. Mm. Find your job too tough for you? Thinking maybe you'd like to work here on the ranch again with me. Oh, that, that ain't it. I... Oh, then you admit there is something, though. Pa, I... Yeah? Well, oh, I... come on. We got stuck like this once before, and you never did get around to talking. Pa, I... I'm going to jail. Huh? What's that? I must have been crazy, out of my head. I, I didn't know what to do. They'll jail me just as sure as I'm living. All right, son. Let's have all of it. Hearing the murmur of voices within her son's room, Neil's mother watched his door anxiously. Finally. Come on, Neil. Yeah, Pa. Honey, get our cash box. What? The cash box, hurry. Oh, Don't you... ask me to explain, just get it. Neil, my guns are hanging by the kitchen door there. Bring them here. Pa, what are you figuring to do? You still owe 3000 to this fellow, Franklin. That's it. But well, I'll get them IOUs, then he'll get a stomach full of lead. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had been riding steadily for Henry Gilman's ranch. That night, after a month of travel, the masked man saw the lights of the ranch house in the distance. There's the place, Kimosabe. Uh, We're almost at the end of our trail. Come on, old fellow. Get him Hurry, up, boy. Get him up. But Hank Gilman and Neil, leaving the ranch house before the masked man's arrival, rode into town. There they dismounted in front of the Black Arrow Cafe, tethered their horses, and entered the place together. Hank walked stiffly, his hands never far from the gun that hung from his hips. Neil, his face white and drawn, followed his father's lead. Where's this fellow Stag? I don't see him. No, there he is. They're just this side of that office, close to the door. Fellow with the handlebar mustaches, huh? Yeah. Well, you keep shut. Let me do the talking. Oh, You've man. already done too much talking, son. The wrong kind. Now, don't be scared for me. I've run into tin horns like this, gent, plenty of times before. Now, come on. Hey, you the gent that calls Stag? Oh, good evening. Hello, Neil. This must be your father. Yes, Shut up. Uh... Stag, how's for having a private talk with you? About anything in particular? About money. About the money you got coming from my boy. You, uh, you're paying his debt? I am. <laughs> It'll be a pleasure. Here's my office. Step in. Now, if you'll just give me the money, I'll get Neil's... I you. don't do business with the hired hands, mister. When I do business, it's with the boss. Oh, you must mean Mr. Franklin. I reckon I do. Well, I'm afraid that'll be impossible. Neil should have told you. Mr. Franklin sees no one, so of course... Take us to the boss. You wouldn't dare shoot him. Wouldn't I? Just try me out. You would never get out of here alive. But you'd be dead before I would. So how's it to be? My way or yours? 
You'll be very angry. So will I. You, this way. Come this way. Egg? Yes, Mr. Franklin? Anyone with you? Tell him there is, and I'll blast you to kingdom come. Uh, of course not, Mr. Franklin. Uh, one moment. I beg you lie to me. Mort, you're Mort. You. You're my brother. Stag, you fool. This is just what I was trying to guard against. I couldn't help it. I couldn't. They had me covered. Well, the damage is done. All right, Hank. What do you want? You've been in town all these months calling yourself Franklin. I have. Come on inside. Don't stand out there for everyone to hear you. Oh. Only found out who I am, huh? Mort, I don't savvy. Why didn't you tell us? Why'd you change your name? <laughs> what? You... I had my reasons. But what reasons? You kid there tell you what happened? He did. Well, there you are. Huh? Hank, maybe you don't remember the day I left home. Well, if you've forgotten, I ain't. I ain't forgot why I left or what I promised you when I left. Promised me? You killed Pa that day out hunting. But Mort... Wait till I finish. You could just call it an accident and let it go at that, couldn't you? Well, I couldn't. I always had been closer to Pa than you'd ever been. Maybe that was part of it. And I never make a promise I don't keep. That's the rest of it. Well, I don't recollect anything about a promise. You don't, eh? <laughs> don't recollect me standing in the door there and telling you someday you'd pay. You mean to say you remember that all these years? Twenty-five years. And not a day's gone by in any one of them that I ain't thought of it at least once. Well, if that don't beat all. I used to think of the time when I'd have my pile made so I could come back here and keep that promise. And finally, I made that pile. I came back. I looked around to see where you could be hurt the easiest. Found it in your boy. You know, Mort, I used to think quite a bit of you when we was kids. Once I thought quite a bit of you. But that's all dead and done with now. What counts now is that Neil owes me 3000 <laughs> A couple of weeks ago, he owed me 5000 I reckon we both know where he got the difference. Well, it don't matter. Neil and me have talked it over. He's going to go to the bank and make a clean breast of it. I'm paying back what he took. If he has to go to jail... Well, I reckon any boy of mine will have the stuff in him to take his medicine without whining. And if he don't have to, well, he owes you for a valuable lesson. Trying to make the best of it, eh? Huh? Ain't much left for me. I reckon you know now I meant what I told you that day. More. Well, they made us out of different stuff, even if we are brothers. I'll tell you plain what I had in mind to do when I came up here. I was going to pay you off... Then drill you. But you needn't worry. I couldn't do that now. Fact is, I don't reckon I need to. Hmm? What's that mean? I've been watching the look on your face. You planned this for years. And now all of a sudden you found out you ain't enjoying it near so much as you'd figured on. You're lying. Fact is, you're kind of sorry you've wasted the time. You got my boy to steal. And it ain't near the big thing you thought it'd be. Mort, right now you're a plum disappointed man. You you don't know what you're talking about. I reckon I do. You don't. I do. Well, who's that? What the? A mess man. There's no need for guns here. Do you? How'd you get up here? You forget your outside staircase. It was easy to step from the landing to the window. What do you want? I heard a part of your conversation from outside. You heard I what? I brought information I believe will interest you. In a way, I'm sorry for you, Mort. But in another way, you deserve it. You deserve it for the hatred you've held in your heart all these years. What are you talking about? The death of your father. Huh? You never learned the truth of that accident, did you? Well, I learned the truth a month ago from the man who'd found your father wounded. No, don't tell him. So you did know the truth, Hank. That's exactly what I suspected. Please, no. You should have told the truth in the first place, Hank. It's best every time. You can see for yourself. In attempting to defend Mort, you've created nothing but trouble. But, but I what didn't... What was that? Hank was defending me? 
That don't make sense. You blamed your father's death on Hank because you thought he'd been found near Cheyenne Creek. He was. He was. No. On the salt flats. Huh? Oh. oh, that's not true. It is. You're... Oh, you're just making it up. You're just doing this to make me think I killed him. You did. No. No, no, it's a lie. You weren't to blame. No one would have blamed you. Hank, however, understood what your father meant to you. He was afraid of what a knowledge of the truth would do. He changed the story. He said your father had been found at the creek. And in exchange for that, you gave him hatred. Hank, look at me. Is that true? Is it? It is. I can see it just in the way you're looking away from me. Mort, I meant it for the best. I, I hated you when, when I should have hated myself. No. I made your boy into a thief when you'd, you'd saved me from being a murderer. Not a murderer, Mort. It was like all I said, just an accident, only an accident. Neil. Yeah? The bank, you, you needn't worry. I, I'll be able to fix that. If you can, Uncle Mort, I'll be grateful as long as I live. <laughs> You grateful to me when when it was me got you in the fix. I am grateful. Honestly. You you got a lot of your father, ain't you? Look, Mort. Huh? We're gonna forget all this. Nobody's gonna mention a word outside about what happened here in this room. And you're gonna come back to the ranch again and stay for as long as you like. You mean that, Hank? Of course. I'll do it. Good. Oh, that's a funny thing. You want revenge for years. But think you do. And then when the time comes, you find you don't. You find all you want is... is to be friends again. And Mort, that's the way it should be. Just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.